CONCACAF Nations League, as Jovan alluded to, why we were a little annoyed. Canada ended up losing 2-0 to the U.S. And obviously, I have some points to make about this one. And no, obviously, losing to the U.S. is obviously one reason we're angry because we don't want to lose to the U.S. at yeah. anything. But this is this is based on just Canada's performance. Okay, why so a couple off. of things before we get into the actual game. This was Atiba's, uh, Hutchison's official last game. He did not step on the field for obvious reasons. And that's the part that pisses me off because we could have a perfect storybook ending there. And on top of that, this was their first final and win. So their last final was the time they won the Gold Cup was in 2000. So 23 years ago. Yeah. Canada, obviously making the World Cup, has shown that there are there's a three headed horse in the CONCACAF. Not okay. So before I want to ask you a question, I'm gonna cut you off there. Yeah. Are they the second best team? Because we know the U.S. is number one. I don't think so. I think we might be. And here's right the reason now, at this current moment, not FIFA rankings. I'm talking about at this current moment. This what we have witnessed from the World Cup onwards. Yes, because Mexico and I was listening to Galindo. I was listening. To, I'm not saying that those guys are like right 100. percent I'm just saying I agree with what they were saying and Halford because they're saying that they are the best because can or Mexico got their ass kicked by the U.S. as well. I did not really. I did not and know what happened. That game, Mexico so did not do well in the World Cup like they normally do. Yeah, that that, that their a, their stars are aging. Can you name any up and coming star for them right now? Only one I could name that's I would say close to in their prime is Herbie Lozano, and that's it. And so you cannot mention any of those the Dos Santos brothers anymore. Um, who's the guy? Real Morales or whoever. Real. Chicharito is no longer there. There's no Chicharito. So it's, it's Canada Raul, for it's me. Jimenez, Raul. And now I have to see them play Mexico. Before, before, before is Raul. Jimenez, not Raul Morales is a completely different player. Oh, okay, yes. <laughs> All right. Raul Jimenez. You could tell them Raul, though. But Yeah. Um. So, so you that's why I'm that. saying I have to see them play Mexico, but yeah. I will not be surprised if they are the second best team. But yeah. The, that's, the reason why the FIFA rankings are massive is it also incorporates previous years. If, if the semifinal was against Mexico instead of Panama, then obviously you would argue can't you it'll be clear that but the way like mexico got their ass kicked by the u.s and yes canada lost to nothing but when we watched the game it wasn't great it was better than that but, mexico what, performance. but canada not being that great still had opportunities to exactly score. that's my point that's why yeah. i'm saying they're the second best team which is why this makes it even worse is my point but to you. you're not but getting, they're a perennial three third for sure yeah but canada you're not you ain't getting off the hook this time okay so here's the thing honeymoon honeymoon phase is over that honeymoon, ended at the world cup that last game against morocco Right, we gave you a pass, you know, Bella took him off in Bobby style, right? Yeah, like uh, first World Cup, first that's time. a card game for those um non Punjabi people watching yeah, right? that don't play Bobby. Uh, yeah, it's a card game, it's uh, yeah, that's all I'm gonna say. If you play with that rule, yeah. but that World Cup, like, okay, this is the first time you experience playing with like Belgium, who's yeah, considered one of the powerhouses or was because their golden era is over, Croatia. And Morocco, who are two semifinalists in the yeah, World Cup. Exactly. Right? So, first World Cup, you're a young team. You got experience out of the way. Now, th- now is where the thing starts. Yeah. You fall off now, it's it's not going to look good. So, here's the thing that pisses me. It ain't going to look good for the Stars. It ain't going to look good for Canada Soccer. It ain't going to go- look good for John Herdman. No, one's the off the, no one's off the hook. No here. one's off the hook. The players, Canada Soccer as a whole, the coaching staff. Here's the reason why. You've shown you could be a, uh, get a result, not just beat, get a result against an, a good U.S. squad, right? You tied them in the qualifiers last year at U.S. In the USA. And down one nothing, by the way. Down one nothing. And you beat them at home, number one. Number two, you did the exact same thing at Mexico. One of the teams that you, you, normally you can't go down to the Azteca and win. You, beat, you tied them at the Azteca, and then they came here and you beat them. How long has it been since we've done that? A very long exactly, time. the reason why we're riled up and upset is when you know the Canada soccer history. They've been shit. There's a reason why Atiba Hutchison had retired at once upon a time and came back when he realized there's something going on here. Right, John Herdman called him up, but the reason. Um, so the game first, they were not ready to play. Um, they were after the first goal. They looked like it was over. There were yes, there were chances, but they weren't like no, yeah. They they started to play after the second goal. They were. They, they were fundamentally, like, technical issues. Five-yard passes being misplaced. First touches being worse than my first touch. And my first touch is absolutely garbage, right? Uh, uh, we couldn't get the... 
uh, shitty giveaways in the in our own half in the middle third. Set pieces were brutal. Set pieces couldn't freaking Estacio. I love you. Like both offensive defensive. Right. Sorry, I'm gonna clear. Yeah, up, like, go on the offensive side. Um, uh, but you couldn't hit a corner kick past the first defender to save your life that game. Yeah, I so, under I don't understand how as a professional soccer player you need to hit a corner kick or a free kick past the first defender. Yeah, unless you're actually purposely hitting it in your post for a flick on, that's a different story. But clearances. Like the U.S. made simple clearances, uh, yeah. Like I was going shitty giveaways in the middle third and your own defensive third, uh, could not uh, could execute in the final third. Couldn't execute in the final third, but also could not link play at all. The only way we got up the pitch is by playing a diagonal ball and using Davies' speed and who struggled was, a who was struggled as well. And then your two strikers, strikers David and Laren, couldn't get into a game, and they struggled a lot because the you could, first of all, you couldn't get them the ball. Second of all, when you did get them the ball, they couldn't. They, there's no help around them. No, there's no. Yeah, no. But this is on David and Laren. They couldn't hold it up. Yeah. So here's the other thing. Defensively as well, we need absolutely better center shocking. Um, it's time absolutely to play. Absolutely shocking. I look at Kale and Kyle's tweet. It's time to play the younger defenseman. I'm not saying it's Borian's fault completely. Could he have saved the first goal? He should have saved the first he goal. He should have saved no, the first he goal. He should have saved. Like they could rebound. I'm not saying he should have caught it. Yeah. Or, like, there would have been a rebound, but he should have saved that first goal. Right. I'm not letting him off that. Um, That second goal was shocking defensively. Like, no one stepped up to... Bro, Reyna was Reyna. a free man dribbling. And the, there was no surprise to me when Gio Reyna went injured is when kind of picked it up their game a little bit in the midfield. Yeah, Gio Reyna was having himself um, a game. The, okay, so that's the game. And the frustrating part was they had the perfect storybook ending. The, sorry, the last frustrating part was... They had Weston McKenney suspended, and they had Serginio Des suspended, and they had Tyler Adams injured. This is the U.S. team I'm talking about. This wasn't the best U.S. team. Exactly. On and this was a final. You would think that this is the championship, the New Haven, sorry, the CONCACAF Nations League is a second-year trophy or third year, and I, USA won last year, so they're back-to-back champs. I think it's... I think it's second year, and I think U.S. won every time. Okay, so, yeah. so oh yeah, I wasn't sure if Mexico won the I'm first not, one. I'm not sure. was the first one. I'm guessing it's second year. Okay, so... The reason why we're annoyed is Canada soccer now has expectations. And the problem is, and I've never seen Kristen Jack, who's one of the analysts after the game, pissed off. So here's my, here's my rant. Canada soccer, figure your shit out. I don't know what your political status is right now. Get this team now better opponents. That's your job. You need to get friendlies made for these guys that are better opponents. CONCACAF, outside of the U.S. and Mexico, is not a top region team for you to play friendlies against and there's no point setting up friendlies against mexico and u.s because you're going to play them anyways in competitive markets or competitive tournaments like which you will in the gold cup qualifiers and now the copa america and future concacaf exactly so you need to do what uh, get uruguay again you need to get them um, ready for argentina and the copa america brazil whoever you need to play all right that's number one uh number two Canada soccer as a whole, the scouting department, John Herman, whoever it needs, whoever's the head of this, start recruiting those dual sit- young dual citizen guys that are elite. All right, U.S. soccer is on the come up. None of their guys are elite core guys are old. They're on the come up. Their striker who scored the second goal is insane. He's well. good. I think he's in the league. Oh. Yeah, they have a lot of guys in the European leagues. Canada is obviously doing better in that with you got Alfonso Davies, Jonathan David, Kyle Lahren, Stefan Ostakio, Trajan Buchanan, and... Um, Alistair Johnson Yes, now. yeah, him. So you obviously need to find more guys. Can you get some dual citizens like the Ike Ugbo? I'm not saying he should be the guy. Preferably defenders, but can't pick and choose. Obviously, there's we one. We need to get a center back and a center defensive mid to hold that defensive structure yeah, that down together. Yeah, triangle was like... You would... Ex- obviously, oh, and Ismail Kone, who had a decent game yeah, as well. Ismail yeah, Ismail Kone was good, decent. Uh, he had a great uh, setup in the first half. Uh, okay, strikers, you would think they're fine, right? With uh, David. The talent we have, yes, but yeah. I'm going to get to the players but, in a second. But, Let's talk about the Canada soccer side of Obviously, things. we're just talking about like roster on paper. Yeah. Like, what we've seen uh, in qualifiers and the World Cup, right? Yeah. And that time, every time they lost or whatever, we didn't care because we're like, okay, you made it. You guys did this now. You made this. Here, but like you said, honeymoon phase is over. Yeah. All right. There's an expectation. Now you got to live up to it. Exactly. Right. Like, in my eyes, you're the second best team in this um, region. Yeah. Right. And then uh, um, There's, there, it will be a disappointment if you don't make the finals, in like, my eyes, in any competition. Obviously, all these big nations, they made an expectation of themselves and they're living up to it. Right. 
Um, but here's my point. On paper, you would agree we have good striker talent, right? Good attacking depth in general. Attacking depth, uh, talent, and high end talent, right? High end, and that also includes attacking midfielders and maybe box to box eights. Yeah. At least we need depth in it. But Obviously, there's starting lineup David, wise. Laren, Davies, Buchanan, Estacio, Kone, right? Those are good, like, attacking Osorio court. Osorio is okay. Osorio is also good decent. De- uh, develop or uh, depth. Depth-wise, right, so. Cavallini is good depth-wise as well, right? Um, fullbacks. I think... I'm happy with them. I think it's decent, right? Again, depth never hurts. Depth never hurts, but, like, you got Johnson, you got Larea, you got Adekube, and I don't know if I'm missing anything. Center backs and CDM. Oh my goodness! I have and goalie in bro, a way. I wa- we don't we know watched the Cousins game yesterday, right? Yeah, absolutely shocking game. This was worse than that. This was completely worse than that. The thing about that game was both teams were garbage. Yeah, so it didn't matter, and they ended up winning. Shout out to our cousin who hit the winning penalty, game-winning penalty. Also, a nice little corner flag smash celebration. Uh, but no, this time USA was good, and it showed that yeah. USA were hungrier, they were technically better, and, and they like, absolutely dominated that that triangle three that we need the center back, center back, and CDM. Here's the thing. I'm going to cut you off there. The 2 nothing down, fine, whatever. USA, obviously, here's the thing. Same thing happened with Morocco. Same thing happened with Croatia when they were down 3-1. They're, the teams like Panama, if you're down one nothing, 2 nothing, you could come back. Teams like what the U.S. are doing now, and if you think the U.S. is tough to come back from 2 nothing down, the teams you di- faced in the World Cup, which did it to you guys. The, all three teams. Belgium, you were down one nothing as well. Now, that one was more you weren't clinical. That's what I will blame the, put the blame yeah, to. That was just that was not a good game, but like you weren't you clinical. Expect, you cannot expect to come back from behind, but you need to learn to come back from behind with some urgency and you can't give up because when you're going to play teams that are in the World Cup consistently, that includes the U.S., you need to do this. Okay, realistically, last three games we watched were the Croatia game, Morocco game, and then obviously the final today, right? Yeah. Three elite opponents. I watched a little bit of the Panama game, to be fair. but Yeah, yeah no, but like, we're, if you're talking about the three big opponents, right? Canada in the qualifiers, you know what they did well? They played from minute one to minute 90 plus out of time. Yeah. They were never down, really. Yeah. Those three games, they played after they were down by two goals. Yeah. That's that's well. Um, Belgium was one goal, but uh, no, I'm not. I'm not counting Belgium. I oh. said Cro- Croatia, oh, today. Morocco, yeah. and then today. Oh, okay, that's the issue yeah. now. So, yeah, they, that's the paper stuff. You can't Let's, fall off. All right, moving on to the players quickly here and the coaching. Um, would you agree that Jonathan David, especially him, but like the big time players in general, when it comes to the big time Canada level games, have not really stepped up to that moment. This includes the World Cup against big teams. Um, yes, we have seen it during qualifiers. Some of these guys, like Kyle Lahren, has stepped up. But I'm more so talking about Jonathan David here. It, it is Jonathan David out of all of them. Because in qualifiers, we saw Estacio shine. We saw Davies shine. We saw Lahren putting some goals. And during qualifiers, Jonathan David got, you know, benched for a couple games. Like, he was out he of the starting He did shine, line. but the shine was for, like, Honduras and games like that. Yeah, right? Like, he is our superstar striker. He is supposed to be that. Yeah. And he has not been that for these games. Uh, he hasn't done that in the World Cup. He has it, he, And he didn't do it today. Yeah. Uh, him it's and Kyle Lahren today missed two clear chances that they didn't hit the target. Yeah. I don't know if I said this before or not, but like I, it just it was just amazing to me because they were at the 18 yard. Kyle Lahren was in the 18 yard. Yeah. So and like we need clinical like finishing now because. In that Belgium game, that's what cost us the game, right? And obviously, when it came to Croatia and Morocco, we were a little bit more dominated. Yeah. So, yeah, I know for overall, I think the big players have to step up big times. And like I mentioned before, Christian Jack, I've never seen him animated like this ever. Like like you said, like we said, the honeymoon phase is over. We know what these expectations are. I mean, we got animated too. Yeah. <laughs> we were. We know animated, what the expectations yeah. are. That's why we're like frustrated. I was talking to my buddy. He's like... Obviously, he doesn't. He didn't really watch the game, but I'm like, bro, if you watch this game, trust me, you would be frustrated because we know the expectation. This isn't the Canada from ten years ago, right? Not even like from three years ago. So, the expectations are higher, which is why I want to lead to this question: Is Alfonso Davies the best player in Concacaf, just in general, overall, throw in club level, everything? If you throw in club and country, then yes. Okay, so because Pulisic does struggle. Where do you, in a club. Where do you think his best position is? Left, left flank, 
not left back because I think we need him more attacking wise. So if we pick three at the back, obviously the left wing back, and then left mid or left wing. Uh, he's not a striker, and to me, he's too good for us to be playing at left back. He, for me, he needs to make impact higher up the pitch, and I think they, I think people would agree because he's considered as one of our best players. And we need him to make an impact offensively. So he does get moved around a lot, right side, left side, striker, even center mid at times. And obviously, we've witnessed it with Bruno Fernandez. You witnessed it as a player because when I used to coach you, um, I would because you were like one of my reliable guys that could play in all those spots. So I would put you center mid, outside mid, a lot. Yeah, it was but tough as a player because when I was playing, like when you start, when you keep in like mind, you're not also a professional. Yeah, no, no, but like time. when you feel like you're playing good at position, where I, sometimes I felt like I'm playing good out on the wing but then I had to get moved in the middle. Then I'm like, okay. Adjustment period. Adjustment. I have to see the game through a different thing. And there's a lot of teammates that I had obviously dealt with that too. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so it's definitely, there's an adjustment in game as a player that you're like, okay, there's a different, especially going from winger to mid into the middle of the pitch is a big difference. Or like moving up and down or opposite yeah. side a little bit. But how much do you think John Herdman, like KJ was saying, needs to figure this out because he is the best player in CONCACAF. He is your superstar talent, player, everything you want. And he's shown the capabilities of big time. He's had big time moments. He was the guy who scored the first goal ever for Canada in the World Cup. Or at least the first goal in that tournament. I believe it was first it was goal ever. ever in the World yeah, Cup. so in that sense. He is your best player. You play him at his best position. I put him in the best spot. And you put him in the best spot, which is the left wing. And surround him with the teammates around him that could yes that now that doesn't mean that you make adjustments maybe depending on the team you could put him higher up depending on the team you put him defensive you still need to make slight adjustments like that because that still needs to be made at the end of the day right but we're saying that we can't see it happen often